the brother, the boss, and the bully. Stay tuned to hear wonderful truths from the story of David and Goliath. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, we see this wonderful story when David defeated Goliath. When he came to the battlefield to just give food to his brothers, which his father sent him to do, and also find out how they were doing, his oldest brother got really angry when David started asking questions about what Goliath was actually saying and what will be given to the man who will defeat Goliath. He came to David and said, what are you doing here? You, a shepherd boy, go take care of the sheep. He belittled his little brother. Then, when Saul heard about what David was proposing to go and actually fight Goliath by himself, Saul called him and told him, listen, you are just a little kid, just a youth. You will not be able to fight this champion who has been a warrior from his youth. Next, when David faced Goliath, Goliath saw that David was just a little kid. And he said, you come to me. I'm going to defeat you and kill you and give your body to the birds to be eaten. You see, the brother, the boss and the bully all try to belittle David and challenge his identity. Well, how did David respond? He did not lose focus of his God. He told both the bully Goliath and his boss, which was Saul, because you know, the Bible says he was already playing the harp for Saul in the king's court. He told both of them who his God was. He did not lose eye contact with his God. He said, my God, has delivered me from the hand, from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. When I took care of the sheep, he will deliver me from this Philistine. And he tells the same thing to the Philistine, the bully Goliath. He tells him, I'm going to defeat you because you came against and defied the armies of the living God. I will defeat you because of who my God is. And in his name, I'm going to come against you. So see, he did not lose his focus on his God. And he did not let anyone else define his identity. The same way, we should never lose our eye contact with Jesus Christ. And we should let Jesus, who is our big brother and our big boss, define who we are. When we know who our Jesus is, and when we know who he has made us in him, we will do great exploits for the kingdom of God. Let Jesus, who's our big brother, and let Jesus, who's our big boss, define our identity, just like how David did. Next, David represented just not himself, but the entire kingdom of Israel. And he was a blessing to his entire country, a blessing to many others. You see, when we go and do things for God or go about our daily business, it is just not about us, but we represent the kingdom of our Jesus, the greatest king of all kings. Never lose focus of that. David represented his entire country. So when he went and defeated Goliath, all the Israelite army were so emboldened, the Bible says, they chased down the Philistines who were so scared and fled away when they saw Goliath fall down. And they went pursued the Philistines and they defeated them. And you know what happened after that? They came and plundered the tents of the Philistines. They were just so blessed. You see, David represented the kingdom of Israel and was a blessing to all of them. And they plundered the tents of the Philistines and were so blessed. In the same way, you and I, 
Just, it, our life is just not about us. We represent the kingdom of the Most High God as His ambassadors. And our life is to be a blessing to many other people. That's our purpose, to reveal Him and be a blessing to many others. How wonderful. You see, as we mature in the Lord, we will just not think about ourselves, but try to be a blessing as much as we can to other people. For example, when we are preaching, if I'm preaching and I see someone else is going to preach, we pray for them more than we would pray for ourselves so that others are blessed and the kingdom of God which we represented is blessed and increased and mightily takes control and rules and reigns on this earth. Yeah. That will please the heart of the Father. As we mature more and more in Him, we will get His heart and we'll realize it is bigger than just it being about us. So we are to be a blessing to many and we represent the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And you know, last, after David defeated Goliath, they bring him to Saul. And this is so wonderful. He comes, the Bible says, and stood before Saul with the, hand, with the head of Goliath still in his hand. What a beautiful picture. You see, the same Saul who, who told David, you, you're just a kid, you're just youth, you can't go and defeat Goliath. The same Saul asks him, whose son are you? Wow, Saul really needed to find out who David was. And David knew who, whose son he was. And he said, whose son he was to Saul. But you know, he told that, the Bible says, standing and holding the head of Goliath in his hand. Wow. You see, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, God tells the serpent that he will bruise the feet of Jesus but Jesus will crush his head. This was a picture of what would happen on the cross. The enemy, yes, motivated the, the children of Israel and the Romans crucified Jesus. But then when that happened, because of his mighty, precious, spotless blood and his mighty atoning sacrifice, Jesus crushed the head of the enemy. And when he did that, you and I found our identity in him when we receive what he did for us on the cross and by his finished work. So you see the picture of David standing before Saul with the head of Goliath in his hand is a beautiful picture. How you and I should stand based on the finished work of Jesus on the cross who crushed the enemy's head on the cross. How beautiful. And therefore, you and I will know whose son you and I are, the son of Jesus Christ, sons and daughters of the Most High, because we've been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so we can stand on the finished work of Jesus all our lives. Let him who purchased us with his mighty blood define our identity, not family members who will belittle us, not bosses who will challenge who we are, and not the enemy, the bully, who will come and try to block our eyes from who we are and who our God is. Let Jesus, our big brother, let Jesus, our big boss, who purchased us, define our identity. When we know who our God is, when we know who he has made us in him, in Christ, we will do great exploits. And remember, our life is just not about ourselves. We represent the kingdom of Jesus and our life is to be a blessing to many and get the heart of Jesus that we will do everything we can that others are blessed as much as possible. That will please the heart of Jesus and know this, Everything we do is to be based on the finished work of Jesus. And that's what we need to stand on. And you and I know whose we are. We belong to Jesus. 
and we can boldly tell everyone when they say who are you we know whose son we are sons of god heirs of god and joined us with jesus christ never forget this may this be a blessing to you as you and i it be a blessing to many representing the kingdom of god knowing we are bought by the precious blood of jesus christ god bless you